let's start off by looking at a, a visual depiction of the derivative and thinking about the derivative as a tangent line. So this website here has a really nice uh, pictorial of that. So if I look at that, uh, what we have in, in blue is some function, and it's some random function. Uh, you can see it right here. It's x times sine x squared plus 1. Now it's a, it's a good looking function. Uh, but, but sliding on that function in red and green and black is the derivative function. And right here, we, see, we have the derivative function, f prime of x. Uh, that's one of the notations that we've learned as the derivative of x, or the derivative of f of x. And what, what, what we, what we want to see from this um, is two things. One, um, what do the colors mean? So, look, sometimes it's green, black, and red. It's red right now, quickly turns black, and now it's green again. So what this is trying to show is um, when it's green, when it's green is when the function when the f of x, when the function is increasing, when it has a positive slope, or when the, the tangent line slope is positive. And the, the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So anywhere the function is going up, the derivative is positive, it's green. And then right now, when the function is going downwards, the derivative function, or the slope of the tangent line, is negative, and that's depicted by a red line. So anytime a function goes down, you have a negative slope. Anytime the function is going up, you have a positive slope. Green is positive, red is negative. And what about the black? Well, the black occurred just there, and it's going to occur in a second right here. The black occurs at either the maximum point, local max there, or about to get to a local min. And when we have a local max or a local min, what, that, what happens there, the tangent line, is, is parallel to the x-axis. It has a slope of zero. So the black line indicates a slope of zero. All right, so let's, let's get into today's lesson. That was just, this is a helpful, I think, picture of, of the tangent line as it slides along the function. All right, so um, what we want to do is we want to take a function and here we have the function on the left, we have the function with, with, with x equals x squared. And we want to develop the derivative function. Up until now, we've looked at derivatives at a point. But now we want to get the, 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 the uh, a derivative function. So the derivative at any value of x. So what do we do? Well, we're going to use the same methodology. Uh, so let's, let's think about the following. Let's think about different values of x what the corresponding derivative would be. So let's start with x is negative 2. So what we can do is we can draw a tangent line. And x equals negative 2. And inspecting the slope, we get that when x equals negative 2, our tangent line in that graph has a slope of negative 4. So the derivative is negative 4. when x equals negative 1. So let's use a different color. When x equals negative 1, we draw in the tangent line. And it's not as clear, but looking at that, when x equals negative 1, looking at the slope, it goes down 2 and then over 1. We draw the slope of negative 2. Let's finish with these the next three points, when x equals zero, well, when x equals zero, we've got a local minimum, and we draw the tangent line, that has a slope of zero, so when x equals zero, the slope of the tangent line is and when x equals one, we draw the tangent line, once again, Similar to when x equals negative 1, now we have a slope of 2. Lastly, when x equals 2, drawing the tangent line, inspecting that slope, it has a slope of 4. And now what we do is plot all these points. So let's plot these points. Negative 4, negative 4, 
negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2. So when x equals negative 2, our derivative is negative 4. When x equals negative 1, our derivative is negative 2. So we're just plotting these points. And then we've got the point 0, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 4. And what we get is a straight line. This is the path of my derivative function. And what we can see, you know, for each point, you know, we go over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2. It goes to the origin. So you, you know a lot about linear functions. We know that our derivative function has the equation u x. Wow, this is really powerful now. Um, because if I say, you know, given the function f of x equals x squared, then I say, what is the derivative of x, or what is the slope of the tangent line when x equals 3? Now we can just use this developed derivative function. So the derivative when x equals 3 will equal, well, now we just plug 3 into my derivative function. So it equals 2 times 3 equals 4 power 6. So that says, you know, slope of the tangent line when x equals 3 is 6. Or the instantaneous rate of change of my function when x equals 3 is 6. All right, well, uh, and, and that we did all by uh, by inspecting the slopes of the tangent line. The next three questions, on what region of f of x, so now we'll, we'll do some separate questions. On what region of f of x is the derivative function positive? Well, when is the derivative function positive? The derivative function is positive when like we looked at in that original graph, or that original plotlet that had the sliding tangents, right? The, the function has a derivative that is positive when the function is increasing. And in this case, it's going to be from 0 to infinity. And notice that we put a parenthesis for 0, because at 0, it's not a positive derivative or a negative derivative. At zero, the derivative is zero. It's neither positive nor negative. And then, on what region of f of x, on what region of f of x is the derivative negative? Well, it's negative when the function is decreasing, when it's going down, and that happens from negative infinity all the way to zero. When will the derivative function equal zero? Well, we showed that um, that's going to equal zero at a local max or min. And for this particular problem, it happens at the point when x equals zero. And then the last question, um, looking at the function, where will the derivative function be the greatest and where will it be the least? Well, it's the greatest when it's the greatest really means the steepest. And we notice that, you know, looking at my derivative function up here, you know, as x goes on and on and on and on, my function, my derivative function keeps going up, it keeps increasing. So it's going to be the steepest as x approaches infinity. When is it going to be the least? The least meaning the most negative. Well, that's going to happen down here as x approaches negative infinity. So, given this graph, f of x, uh, we want to graph the derivative function. So, we use the same sort of idea. Uh, we're going to draw tangent lines on my function. We're going to draw tangent lines that evaluate the, sorry, evaluate the derivative function or the slope of the tangent line for each of these values of x. So 
Well, some of them I want to just jump right to. Um, I want to jump right to this one, but x equals negative one and a half. So when x equals negative one and a half, that's right here. Then you see the tangent line because it has a local, it's a local max here. The tangent line is, is flat, so it's going to have a slope of zero. And let's also look at this one when x equals negative, or when x equals positive two and a half. So right here, again, we've got a local min. Uh, function has a, a tangent line there that's flat, so the slope is zero. The rest we're going to have to use a little bit more inspection. So when, let's go through it. When x equals negative four, we draw the tangent line, something like that. Uh, by inspection, you see that it has a slope of positive four. When x equals negative two, draw the tangent line. This has a slope of well, let's see, it goes over one, two, three, and up two. So, rise of a run, two thirds. When x equals zero, let's draw this in. So it goes down one, two, three, and over one, two. So, rise, over three, over run, two. One. Tangent line using a different color, just spice it up a little bit. It goes down one, two, and over one, two. So the rise is negative two over two or negative one. And lastly, when x equals four, this looks, you know, this tangent line appears to have a slope of what rises one, two, and runs. Two. And now our goal is to, you know, given this um, chart of x and its, uh, and its respective derivatives, let's let's plot the derivative function. So we're going by negative ones here, and our y values go from negative one up to four. So let's see, one, two, three, four, the right number ones. And what we're plotting is x versus our derivative function. And so let's let's plot them when x equals negative four. Uh, our derivative function equals four. So we've got point four four. The next point is here, negative two, comma two thirds, so negative two, two thirds, something like that. Then we've got negative one and a half, zero. Zero negative three halves. One negative one. Two and a half zero. Then four two. And this, you know, it, it's not it's not perfect. It's not a perfect graph, but you know, it's sort of following this. Uh, parabola shape. Now, now, this is this is a very key thing. Um, my function here was a qubit, and my derivative function is a quadratic. And you, you need to trust me with the graphing. Um, it, it does fall nicely in the quadratic. If you plotted these points on your graphing calculator, it would be quadratic. And similarly, if we went back a page, you know, when I when I started with this, you know, my function, which was x squared. You know, when my function was quadratic, my corresponding derivative was linear. So quadratic went to a linear. The, the function, the function was a quadratic. The derivative was a linear. And so if the function was a cubic, the derivative is a quadratic. So we're you're, you're starting to see that the, the, uh, the power of the derivative drops one. That's a key 